right. I guess we'll, we'll be in order by saying happy birthday to Comptroller Henry. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. That's right. All right. 39, one more time. One more time. Oh, we're so excited to be here um, at Lake Montebello to celebrate another rec rollout program, another new play space, one of 26 that's been installed throughout this city. So uh, we're going to try to move this program along quickly. I do have a, I had a long speech, but we're going to kind of abbreviate that a little bit. I think the heat is going to play a factor in that. But let's go ahead and get started with quickly introducing <laughs> our first individual to the to the mic will be the mayor of our city mayor brandon scott Yay. thank you uh director moore and welcome to uh the hottest weekend in baltimore also known as artscape weekend <laughs> in baltimore uh but we are here today of course to celebrate another uh, opera investment i want to thank everyone of course starting with uh my president and my vice president uh president biden vice president harris our wonderful congressional uh, delegation for the investment into the city and the team at Reckon parks all of our elected officials that have been here supporting these investments as we continue to invest in uh, spaces for recreation and parks in ways that we have it in decades and for me this one is a little more special obviously because we're naming uh, this playground at Lake Montebello after the forever City Council President Council President Mary Pat Clark uh, if anyone who knows uh, uh, Mary Pat knows that above all else she was always a staunch advocate for our young people and families and I have so many stories uh, I won't talk about what how we got in trouble doing snow we getting Mary Pat I'll save that one for another day but Mary Pat and I got into a lot of trouble helping our constituents what we supposed we got our snow plow so it worked but uh, when I first tried to come on to the City Council way back in the 2007 early on before the election uh, I applied for uh, the vacancy in the City Council as a young man from Park Heights and uh, I didn't get it I didn't get it Council Vice President Cheryl Green and Middleton got it I obviously came to the council a short time later so we got both of us but uh, when it was over uh, a week later I'm sitting in my house and I get a letter from Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark that said a whole bunch of great things of why I should keep going and why I should stay focused and never give up on my dream. But at the last portion of that letter, it said, how fast can you get here? Uh, it actually took me about three years and a couple of days to do it, Mary Pat, but I was able to come and I keep that letter at home uh, with me, uh, with all of my stuff from when I've been coming up because it really meant a lot to me because the councilwoman and only two other elected officials that day, uh, both of them just happened to be full mayors, uh, uh, Mayor Rollins Blake and Mayor Young, spoke to me right after that hearing. Uh, one hired me, uh, obviously, but uh, I want to say, uh, Mary Pat, thank you for personally your time and investment in me as a young staffer, as a young council, uh, a young councilman, as a council president and as mayor and showing I uh, mean, really, how to work alongside community members each and every day, how to work for the community, with the community, but most importantly, for showing me how to deal with Mark Washington. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I, before before I, I turn it over to uh, for before I turn it over to uh, Director Kearney, uh, I want to present you with something that actually is a gift. Uh, from Coldstream Homestead Montebello that Mark gave me the challenge of get presenting in view. We know that uh, anybody that knows Mary Pat knows that Chum really is her heart. And we've had this in the Chum building for quite a long time. But we want to present this. Come on up here, Mark and Mary Pat, you too. This photo of a very, very younger Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark in Chum many, many, many years ago. Congratulations, Mary Pat, and thank you. It's the original photo. Oh my God. It's yellow. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Councilwoman Ramos so that we can get to getting Councilwoman. Oh, what? Oh. They were still perfecting the photochrome technology. Right, right, right. 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm really grateful and honored to um, represent this district and uh, very happy that we're all finally here today. This took a, a long time for us to get here. So I wanted to start my remarks by first saying that in 2015, the uprising occurred. And this playground that used to be here was damaged in the uprising. Re it actually caught on fire and residents very quickly put out the fire and tried to make it safe uh, for the kids to continue to play on. One day, um, I came here with my daughter and my daughter said, Mom, the playground is broken. Isn't it heartbreaking to hear a child say, Mom, the playground is broken? And I know that other children had said that uh, to their parents about that particular playground. Well, thanks to Mayor Scott and the ARPA funding, that playground is gone. And you see before you this amazing playground that I already got the thumbs up from lots of kids. So that's a good thing. We got the thumbs up. So I want to thank, um, obviously, our federal partners, uh, Director Kearney and the mayor, uh, really for making this happen because uh, our kids deserve a great place to play. And I'm very excited to have them here. Thank you to BCRP uh, for getting this playground up and running as well. And also, this playground sits on uh, Department of Public Works property. Um, so I want to thank the Department of Public Works. Now, uh, naming the playground after Council President Mary Pat Clark is simply the right thing to do. She represented this area her entire career, um, both as a councilwoman for the, the second district, the 14th district, and as council president. And she deserves all of the flowers for her exemplary service throughout her illustrious career in public service here in Baltimore City. <laughs> Naming this playground after her is a celebration and commemoration of her dedication to children, families, and neighborhoods across our district and across our city. So now, usually when we name buildings and playgrounds and streets, it's not just to put a name on it, but it's to encourage current and future residents to look up. Who is it? Who is this person that's on the nameplate? Who is it? What did she do? Who is Mary Pat? What did she do? <laughs> so here are the things that, I mean, I'm sure there's many stories from many people across the city but I'll just name a couple of major, major accomplishments that I think are very important. Mary Pat Clark is the very first woman to run and win a citywide election. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mary Pat Clark is the very first woman city council president. Yes. In the early days of her career, when there were multi-member districts, some of you remember that, Mary Pat led the way to ensure that more people of color were elected and created diverse tickets uh, for this to happen. She sponsored and passed many significant pieces of legislation, including the tenant right of first refusal, which we just uh, passed an update to. <laughs> um, and, but then also, when you just ask anybody, any, ask anybody, you know, who is Mary Pat? And you ask Miss Daisy, you ask Miss Cece, you ask uh, anybody around, the first thing they'll say is, that's my girl. Yeah. Am I right? That's my girl. And the second thing they'll say is, my mom and her were good friends, right? And then, or they might say, she helped me a lot. She helped my family. She helped me a lot. And that's pretty significant because when you can ask just anybody in Baltimore City, who this is, they always have an answer for who this is, which is really amazing. So um, Mary Pat Clark is an inspiration for all of us in public service to work hard for our constituents in our city. She set the bar really high and I try to grasp it every single day. And I think I can speak for my colleague as well, Councilman Bullock and all of us in the city council, we reach high for that bar every day. Uh, Mary Pat paved the way for women to run and win. She served Baltimore, and naming this playground after her is a small token of our appreciation for her work on behalf of all of us. Thank you very much, Mary Pat. Yep. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Director Kearney. She is the money woman on the um, ARPA funding, so happy to have her here. Thanks. Good afternoon. Again, I'm Shamaya Kearney. I serve as the Chief Recovery Officer for the Mayor's Office of Recovery Programs. Very excited to be here today for yet another opportunity to show you, our residents of Baltimore City, how we are using American Rescue Plan Act funding to benefit our residents. So we've had um, 
three years of ARPA implementation, and this is yet another opportunity to provide um, all of the promises that we gave to you about how we would not just spend ARPA funding but invest. Very excited. I've heard a lot about you, so it's really cool to finally meet you in person. Um, as a newbie to Baltimore City, um, one of the things that you often hear about is you. Uh, and the bar that you set for this city and that you set for public service. So thank you for all that you've done for Baltimore City and that you continue to do um, as you inspire, talk to, coach, mentor um, those of us who are still in public service. So thank you for that. I um, also want to give a shout out to um, to BCRP as well as DPW, um, our colleagues on the council. This is not just a, an accomplishment for the American Rescue Plan Act and for the Recovery Office or even for Mayor Scott. It's really an accomplishment for all of us. So thank you so much to everyone who has been a part of this project. Um, can't wait to see the kids jump around and play. Um, COVID-19 really showed us uh, a lot of the challenges that we had across the city um, and parks and recreation centers became a place where people went for solitude um, and also for refuge. And so we're happy to be able to use this funding uh, to accommodate our, our residents. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Director Kearney. We're so excited again to be here. Um, I just want, I'm going to be quick, I promise I'm going to be quick and, uh, and brief, because uh, I don't want the mayor to pass out with his audio shirt on. You got him? All right, thank you. So we're here to celebrate the 17th playground that's been installed since October of last year. Think about this. Right. 17 playgrounds in Baltimore, but we're not, we're not finished. we got nine left this year that we're going to be installing and we're going to continue to move uh, this initiative. So I just want to just really highlight that and, and thank Director Kearney and, and the uh, recovery office for working with our agency to move these projects. Uh, special thanks to our mayor who believes in this vision and understanding the importance of investing back in our communities. Thank you, Councilwoman Ramos, for the many calls to make sure that this playground was on schedule. Um, right. And I appreciate that. And I just, I just want to quickly highlight uh, Council, former Councilwoman May Pat Clark. Um, in my brief seven years of being here, I had an opportunity to meet with her and to meet with her many different times. And I first want to say thank you for your 32 years of service uh, to this, this city. But I remember two key legislative pieces that you, you really pressed. One, uh, Mayor Pat Clark was the leader in pushing the ban of pesticides. Uh, that we now have in our city to protect our environment. So, Councilwoman, thank you for 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 that. But also, all my things are dying on the ground. We're gonna figure it. It's the heat. We, we, yeah. And the other thing is, I, I remember you walking and having a conversation with me about Reachfield and the stadium at Reachfield, and and that how we was building a a, 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 f a facility next door. Could we collaborate with the school and? Can Councilwoman uh, Mayor Pat Clark, I'll let you know that that project is, is moving and we're working closer with the school. Councilwoman Ramos has taken up where you left off on the stadium and it is moving. So I just want to tell everybody, thank you. It's, it's the value of play spaces. It brings everybody together. And what what better way of renaming a space after someone as significant as former Councilwoman Mayor Pat Clark than this play space? Because we know many, many kids' lives will continue to change on this play space. And without that further ado, I would like to introduce another colleague, someone that, that constantly uh, reminds me of the, the value of parks and green spaces, uh, the community leader for Coal State Montebello, Mr. Mark Washington. All right, Mark. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Moore. Um, I am honored and privileged uh, to be here. Um, you've heard a lot about the historic public service work uh, that Mary Pat has done uh, for the citizens of Baltimore and especially the community at Chum. But I want to bring it a little closer to home uh, to here at Lake Montebello. There is not, and I mean there is not, a faction of Lake Montebello that Mary Pat's fingerprints are not on. And dare I say, Mayor Scott, while we were the uh, manual labor, Mary Scott, Mary and Mayor Scott uh, worked uh, hard to help a couple of things happen. Uh, first, if you look to your rear, you'll see the very uh, beautiful Montebello Elementary Middle School. Mary Pat was instrumental in helping us get to Annapolis to get that money back uh, once that uh, money uh, was pulled. Uh, Maggie McIntosh. Thanks to Delegate Maggie McIntosh. So, yeah. 
Uh, Mary Pat was also instrumental in what you see now uh, at the lake. For those of you who don't remember uh, the history here, the lake was dredged. There were some extra funds left over in the Department of Transportation. And Mary Pat uh, corralled the communities and the gardens Lakeside, Mayfield, and Chum together to ask a very simple and direct question. What do you all want to see at Lake Montebello? And we wanted to see, obviously, a destination, and that's what you all see here today. Um, one last thing that Mary Pat helped with, and this to me was really, really funny. We wanted a disc golf course at Lake Montebello, not one, uh, but two. A nine hole disc golf course here uh, for the school and uh, an 18 hole uh, disc golf course that runs and rings uh, the lake. Uh, Mary Pat asked me, she was like, what is a disc golf course? And I was like, I do not know. <laughs> she went to Director Moore, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> Director Rudy Chow <laughs> and said, I don't know what a disc golf course is, oh. but we need it. <laughs> and so <laughs> Director Chow was like, you, you want us to allow individuals to throw disc around the lake on a protected water facility that's protected by Homeland Security. And she forcefully said yes, and Director Chow acquiesced. Some of the holes that you all see, if you ever walk around Lake Montebello and, and play the disc golf course, were actually dug <laughs> by Mayor Scott. We, we did not have the money, if you recall, <laughs> to get professional help. So, uh, <laughs> We, 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 we had to dig the holes, cement, place it the whole nine yards. And so um, in a lifetime of public service, uh, that which she has done here at Lake Montebello uh, rings closer and truer to my heart. Mary Pat, uh, for all of Chum in the city of Baltimore, we love you. Thank you. You are worthy of this and so much more. Thank you, Mark. So when you're uh, in public service, you know, sometimes I know the council members can relate to this, that it isn't the message, it's the messenger. So after I came home from St. Mary's where I learned how to play disc golf, we went at one at Lake Montebello. But we knew if I delivered the message, they would say no, but they wouldn't say no to Mary Pat. Thus, we have the, what, what, thus we have it. And now we're going to hear from a, a, the birthday boy who has lots and lots and lots of stories about Council President Mary Pat Clark, Bill Henry, our great comptroller. Comptroller? I, I, I won't I, I, it, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I would be tempted to, to tell many stories about Mary Pat, except I look out at this wonderful, smiling, happy, exuberant crowd sweating profusely and fanning themselves and those are the ones under the tent so i will i will be brief and i will um i will just tell i will tell one story that for me sums up uh the four years that i spent working for mary pat which by the way is 15 years in normal staffing time but uh, i have not been able to convince the retirement systems of that um <clears throat> Uh, early on in the in the four years that I worked for Mary Pat, uh, I accompanied her to an event at the Forum, uh, a, a catering hall in, in Northwest. For those who aren't familiar, and um, and I don't remember the exact event, but I do remember that the the mayor at the time, Mayor Schmoke, was also at the event. And um, as I stood against the the wall with his executive protection unit and watched the two most powerful people in Baltimore City government uh, moving among the tables and talking to people, I noticed that they were each writing down notes. And I thought, this is great that you, know, you get to the top of the, the, the tower in city government, but you're still doing the basic thing. You're still taking down constituent service problems um, and helping the individual people. But then as Mayor Schmoke got closer to where I was, I realized he wasn't actually writing down constituent problems. He was autographing the program for the event because people were asking him for his autograph. Mary Pat was writing down constituent problems on little um, four by six uh, uh, note cards that she would keep in her purse. 
And that's when I started paying attention and realizing that even when the mayor got to the table first, they might like chat with him and shake his hand and maybe have him sign a program. And then when Mary Pat got there, she would give, they would give her the problems because the people of Baltimore, generations in this town were raised to know that Mary Pat will help you with your problem, whatever it is. And that's why I don't thank her for her 32 years of service because that is just the time she spent in elected office. And for years before that, as a parent and community leader, she worked hard for our, I, I wore my, I wore my Leith Walk shirt because Mary Pat is here because she first got involved in schools for her own kids. And that we were a problem. <laughs> and if, if the school system had just done what it should have done, Mary Pat could have just stayed home and just taken care of her own family. But no, no. She went from that to getting involved with Greater Homewood and that encouraged her to be interested in more community problems. And the next thing you know, the people of Baltimore were electing her to office and continued to elect her for a generation with a brief sabbatical. Um, and so for that, I am grateful to be here to honor her. I am glad that we are naming this playground after her. And um, I'm going to just warn the mayor right now, there may be other things we need to name for her. As, 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 I'm glad the councilwoman has a plan. So thank you. Thank you very much. And now I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Well, now we'll hear from the woman of the hour uh, for Al Forever, Council President. Council President Mary Pat Clark. Oh, thank you to everyone for all your the, this wonderful chat. <laughs> it's just great to be back here and to hear stories from your perspective <laughs> that, that I lived and enjoyed and am, am happy about. Um, I haven't spoken before a group for a long time and that will become obvious to you. However, um, I would like to say first and foremost, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And by the way, I think you came as fast as you could to City Hall, and it was just in time for me to not understand the equipment you used across the hall in your office that I still can't use but you managed to run an entire district with it and it worked. So thank you for that and for being there and sh getting there. And thank you, uh, and thank you, Odette, for being such a great person in our council and for making me so proud. Every, every time I think about the city council now, I think it's all right, it's okay. It's all right, it's going good. And all kinds of great things are happening and they're happening in a organized way and along with our mayor, et cetera, and our council members, um, et cetera, and our agency heads, of course, and Bill Henry. He, <laughs> he creates his own chaos and I've always loved every bit of it. All right, I was told a couple weeks ago to keep it short. <laughs> I'm already short, um, but I can keep it that way. <laughs> but I think I took the advice that it would be hot. And so um, I'm going to think of that, but I do want to tell you a little bit about me just for a second so you understand uh, about me. I grew up as a shy person who could not speak in front, in front of au uh, audiences. Uh, I couldn't even open my mouth to do so. Uh, it was so bad that when I was a senior in college, and that was Immaculata University, it's girls university, uh, when, I, when I was there, I loved politics, and so I was the campaign manager for the woman, Teeny O'Connell, she's about this tall, who was running for president of the school. 
And so we came to the big night where all the candidates said their thing to the whole school. And when we walked in, the, the professor who ran our group said, oh, girls, I have such a good idea tonight. We're going to have the campaign managers do the speech, not the candidates. Well, I knew that I couldn't speak. I knew I couldn't do this. And I had the best candidate. And so basically, when it came my turn, which was the last one, I did get one sentence out of my mouth. Fellow students, if you vote for me, wait a minute, what, well, I just want to make sure I have this right. Dear, dear students, if you vo don't vote for Teeny O'Connell, you may end up with a president like me. They stood on their feet and applauded, and she won almost unanimously. And that was the last year I was heard very well until I came to this wonderful, wonderful Baltimore that I love with all my heart. And oh, by my daughter is here. Hello, daughter. Yay, Jen. Um, and so basically, um, when I moved here with my husband, he's a native. He, Joe was a native Baltimorean by family, but we had all moved around as kids and ended up back in Baltimore. And I sat on the front steps of our house with my two week old baby and watching my two year old boy um, meeting the boys next door. And when that was going on, I. When, when we were meeting this neighbor, she said, well, we have two boys, they're riding their bikes, why don't you just send your boy up with me and we'll, um, we'll take care of him and, and is there anything I can do for you? I said, well, I need some milk. And so basically, off they went. And ever after, that neighbor has said, that told everybody that I gave away my firstborn for a quart of milk. <laughs> now, uh, that's not at all what it was. He did come home and he now is a grown man and he doesn't show any, uh, any problems for having been left behind. But really I want, well, now and then a problem, you know. But, but I wanted to keep it short because I was asked to do that. And so I would like to say I was, fa I f was included in Baltimore, that when I came to Baltimore, she brought me a quart of milk and she let me have my son back. And people were saying hello, and I was, and as time went on and I got involved with the schools and everything, here's what I discovered. I was included in Baltimore. I just came from who knows where, but I had opinions, and I had kids, and I had a reason. And so I was part of things. I was liked. I was liking back, et cetera. In other words, I love Baltimore. It is different and better from any place our poor fathers took us as, as children. And it is the place I love more than any in my life. And I know my husband Joe up there is watching to make sure that all the documents have the E on the end. Uh, <laughs> and um, they usually do, but he's not allowed to speak. He can only watch us. Um, and so what I'd like to do is say, this is your thanks, your celebration. And I join it because you've taken me in when... I didn't even know I had a voice. I didn't even know I could make things happen. I didn't know. Baltimore is how I learned what I did. Oh my gosh, there is my daughter standing here. Oh, I have to stop and introduce her, but all right. So this is my daughter who just graduated from uh, granddaughter. granddaughter. Oh, 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 granddaughter. Lucy, okay? Lucy, she just got graduated and she even got a job. Whoa. Hey, Lucy. Yes. Hey.
And she's living, and she just rented in the city. Yay. All right. Okay. So, basically, this is about all of us and the, for a community that somehow is blessed to be inclusive and want its people and expect us all to, to take the lead and expects us all to fight a little with the mayor now and then. And, okay. And, of course, Mark always fills in that blank. blank. So I would like to thank the people who really were the volunteers to make this happen in partnership with government, et cetera. And they are Chum, Coldstream Homestead, Montebello. They are Edner Gardens Lakeside. And they are, I'm sorry, I had to write this down. I was afraid I'd forget, and now I just can't read. <laughs> um, Mayfield, of course. And so the volunteers there, the leaders of the organizations, made it their business to keep on us, keep on, the, keep on everyone, to make this happen. And as you pointed out, Madam, uh, Councilwoman, as you pointed out, or maybe it was someone else, that school got fixed. Because if you're going to put, if you're going to do this beautiful thing outside, let's give them an inside that works. And people like Maggie McIntosh down in Annapolis at the time made sure that there was no money, but we spent it anyway, which is what we do very, very well. So... I just want to thank everybody for being here today in this heat and to say that I am grateful ever for Baltimore City and all it has meant to me personally as, as a person. It is such a gift to be here for me and such a wonderful place to call home and my children just as well who are, they move back here from wherever they go to college if they go. So thank you, thank you for this honor to all of us because it wouldn't be anything at all that we're talking about today if the all of us hadn't helped us exp do, do our best and make things happen. Thank you. Thank you, and, and Mary Pat, we know you love Baltimore, but not as much as Baltimore loves you. We don't think that's possible. Uh, so before we, we unveil, we'll see if we have any quick media questions for, for us. Maybe one related to the playground or to the playground. Good, good luck with that, Bill. <laughs> Mackenzie, you're first. Should have made a bet. You would have won if you would have bet. I know. We just... <laughs> I could have got Coco's out of Bill. We could have close. <laughs> Mackenzie, go ahead. Um, okay. So I have a couple of questions. Um, one is about a contract that's on the um, the Board of Estimates next week for the uh, the Reservoir Square. Can you just explain, given the connections that we we know are between you and the developer, why usher this contract through? So I think that, Mackenzie, I'm actually glad you, you brought that up. One, uh, every time uh, people that look like me get contracts, you guys seem to have a problem with it. But I want you to know uh, that, and you can call him and ask him if you want to, that this particular uh, uh, project in moving was actually started by my predecessor. Not by me, but it's the right thing to do. If you know about Reservoir Square, you don't know Reservoir Square by his, by his true Baltimore name. It was known as Murder Mall because the city allowed it to be a place that was desolate for decades. We allowed a liquor store and this apartment complex to just degrade a neighborhood time and time and time again. And now uh, that we are redeveloping that, right, with someone who lives in that neighborhood, right, who's never left West Baltimore, and we're moving uh, the folks from Moed out of a dilapidated building that has been uh, uh, falling in on itself since I was across the street at Mervo. You guys are trying to make uh, uh, issues. There's no issue here. 
first and foremost because I did not put forward the, the plan. It was put forward by my predecessor, but it's the right thing to do because if the city uh, wants to have development and things happening and investment in neighborhoods that have been ignored the way that one has been most of my lifetime, we have to have a stake in it. Just like we're moving TV 25 from a downtown into Penn North. We're doing the same thing there because if we want everyone else to say that these neighborhoods matter, then we have to have investment there as well. Okay. And then switching gears, I know that you answered some questions yesterday about this, but um, we weren't there. So this is from one of my other colleagues working on this story about the former health commissioner. Can you explain why she was fired and is she under investigation for so what So you know I can't Mackenzie we don't discuss personnel uh personnel uh, uh orders at all she's no longer with us uh when, in the appropriate time uh we will have those those discussions in a public fashion we are right now laser focused on filing on finding another high qualified individual to run the health department but we cannot discuss any personnel issues or comment on anything further are you concerned about this vacancy and what this means for no i'm not concerns? i'm not concerned at all we know that being the health commissioner of baltimore city is a very sought after position and we know that we have the professionals there to move the agency ahead uh in the meantime thank you thank you barry barry you mentioned about the heat and being out here um we got artscape starting uh this is are, are you concerned or what concerns do you have about how hot it's going to be this weekend and, and any messages to the people who are coming out to Artscape? Well, listen, Barry, I think that we, we know uh, that Historically, this has happened during Artscape, right? Uh, we want folks just like we had this conversation during AFRAM. If people are going to be out there, they have to hydrate, especially with it being out in a place where there's a lot of pavement. This isn't in a park like AFRAM was, right, in Drew Hill Park. People have to hydrate themselves. Start now. They should have started yesterday. But take care of yourselves. Make sure that you're drinking. Make sure that you enjoy the stuff. And also, if you can come when it's a little later in the day and it's a little cooler, do that. We also have to be we're very uh, uh, watching the weather as far as the storms and those things and notifications that we may have to give. We want people to enjoy our escape, but do it safely uh, because we know when you have events in August and Baltimore in the summertime, it's going to be hot and it's probably going to rain. Uh, which is, you know, why uh, the mayor may have said we should move our escape to September. Anybody else? All right, Mary Pat, you ready? Let's do it. You got to unveil the sign. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, my God. 